You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. So we're going to be uh, joined on the telephone and uh, we're going to be doing our regular slot with the local police force. Firstly, thank you very much for joining us. Would you be able to introduce yourself to our listeners firstly? Yeah, my name's Tom Metzfit. I'm a sergeant of the community policing team based at Sittingbourne Police Station. Now we're going to be uh, hopefully covering some stuff, I think, regarding to the time of year as we approach uh, Christmas and this sort of uh, time of year. Um, could you let our listeners know what those things are? Yeah, I've got uh, a list of things that we're going to be talking about, but um, the key points are uh, how you can stay safe when you're on a night out, as we um, we like to go out at this time of year with our friends and family. Um, and just a few helpful tips on how you can stay safe and make sure that you don't fall victim to um, any, any crimes that anybody else would like to commit against you. Well, if you could expand on those things for our listeners, that would be great. Yeah, OK, so um, starting with the nights out that we, uh, we love to have at this time of the year then, um, there's obviously things that, uh, that we need to bear in mind as we're out and about trying to enjoy ourselves. The key things are that um, uh, the effects of alcohol need to be borne in mind. Now, we, we, um, we like a drink, some of us, but um, we need to remember that alcohol dulls your instincts uh, and it can affect your natural awareness of danger. Um, it might make you take risks that you wouldn't necessarily take at any other time uh, and it reduces your inhibitions, which makes you more likely to do things that you wouldn't when you were sober, perhaps. What I would advise is that when you're out and about, if you're confronted with any sort of situations that you don't feel comfortable with or you think that there's going to be any sort of confrontation, then walk away. You don't use aggressive body language or words. Um, never walk home alone if you can avoid to. If you, if you can stick with your friends and make sure that you're, um, you're in a, a part of a crowd that, uh, who know where you are uh, and who can assist you in getting home safely, um, then that's a good idea. And try and walk in well-lit areas so that people can see if, uh, if anything does happen, which hopefully it won't, but um, we, you just never know as you're walking about at, at late at night. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is drink spiking. Right. Uh, now, if somebody spikes your drink, then they could go to prison for up to 10 years. If it leads to uh, anything more sinister, like a, a sexual assault or uh, a robbery or something like that, then obviously the sentence can be higher, but there's certain things that you can do to, to avoid your drink being spiked in the first place. Now those things are, if you can avoid drinking out of an open top glass, then that's great. It, it's much better to, to drink out of a bottle. And if you do that, then you can put your, your thumb over the top of the bottle to prevent anybody putting anything inside. Um, you can keep an eye on your friend's drinks, so you help each other out. And never accept a drink from anybody that you don't know, unless, of course, you've seen it prepared yourself and you're satisfied that there's nothing sinister in it other than what should be. And if you can avoid it, don't share or exchange drinks with people, again, because you just don't know what could be in them. And uh, if you do so, you could be putting yourself at risk. Uh, and next on the list is uh, drink driving. Now, obviously, People still do do it in this day and age, despite the uh, the fact that the dangers of it are well publicised and well known. Um, but if you choose to do so, you're putting not only yourself at risk, but other people on the road. And we don't want people's Christmases and uh, even worse, people's lives put at, put at risk and ruined for the sake of um, a quick drive home when there could be alternative methods such as walking or even better getting a cab if it's uh, if it's a bit too far. Um, you could face a prison sentence if anything uh, if anything was to happen. We are being proactive at this time of year in trying to catch people, and uh, but what we prefer to do is to put people off in the first place. So if you can avoid doing it, please do. So that's um, that's the main topics for uh, for going out and enjoying yourselves. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to move on to um, how you can avoid becoming a victim of crime. Right. Uh, and the, the first thing on the list is uh, burglaries. Now, this time of year, they, they do tend to increase, unfortunately, because it's quite well known that people have expensive things in their house like, that they've bought for Christmas. 
So things that you can do to protect your home, uh, such as double locking your windows and doors. Now even though that they're shut, it is still possible for, for burglars to open them up using an implement of some sort. So it's best to try and double lock them. Keep, um, keep valuable items out of view within your house. Make them difficult to find because if somebody does gain an entry, they don't want to stay in the house for too long. So if you can make things difficult for them and make it uh, a, little, a little less appetising, shall we say, to stay in the house, then that would be better. You can buy things like timer switches uh, for your lights and your radios from most popular DIY shops these days, but if you can't find them locally, then look online and try and get hold of some, just to make it look as though there's somebody in when, um, when perhaps there isn't. And keep your, your garden gates locked and garden boundaries secure, and lock your sheds and garages, and make sure that everything of value that you wouldn't necessarily want to lose is locked away safely. The common myth for burglary is that they happen at night time when in fact most of them happen during the day during daylight hours when people are out at work for example so just be aware if you can just um, help, you, help your neighbours out as well and make sure that you all know your, your comings and goings if you can trust your neighbours because then you can keep an eye out on each other's properties and help each other right um, you can also get security marking equipment for your valuable items. Now, if you can't find them uh, in any shops locally, then speak to one of your local local PCSOs, and they'll perhaps be able to help you with some of the equipment that they can provide. Um, moving on to vehicles, again, because of the time of year, uh, people tend to leave things on view in their vehicles when they're out shopping. Um, and obviously, it's a time of year when thieves are trying to acquire things because they themselves want to give people things for Christmas that they might not necessarily be able to afford. So keep things out of view in your car. Um, if you've got a lockable glove box, then use it. Obviously, again, it's slowing people down. If they want to break into a car and they want to try and take something and it's locked away in a glove box, then it's going to take a little bit longer for them to get hold of it. And when you're at home, keep your car keys somewhere safe. If um, Worst case scenario, if you, if you are broken into... It's not unheard of for the burglars to take your car keys to come back to take your car at another time. So if you can keep them well hidden, then it stops that from happening. And when you're out and about, try and park somewhere well lit. If you're out in the evenings, park it in a secure multi-storey or something like that. Preferably looking out for where the CCTV cameras are and making sure that you park it within view of those, which uh, will deter the offenders from having a go at your car. And uh, moving on to when you're out shopping. Okay. We all um, hopefully would have done it well in advance, but uh, if those of us that have still got it left to do, um, I would advise that you only take with you what you need for a trip out. Leave your valuables at home. If you have a bag, keep it fastened into the front of your body so that nobody can access it without you knowing. And keep your valuables out of sight and preference. You spread them around yourself, so if you've got pockets inside your jackets, then uh, use them. Don't leave all your valuables on show in your back pockets, for example, so that they're easy for people to remove. If you need a purse chain, again, try and contact your local PCSOs, and they'll either advise you on where you can get hold of one, or if they've still got them, then, uh, then they can provide them to you. And try not to leave your belongings unattended or in easy reach, for example, on the top of a pram when you're out shopping or on the top of a scooter or something. Just make it a little bit more difficult for those that are trying to get hold of your belongings. So that's, um, that's the key, key points to bear in mind for this time of year to make sure that uh, you can enjoy your Christmas period, really. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time out to talk to our listeners and uh, cover those areas. OK. If anybody um, would like to speak to us, or receive any further advice about anything, then uh, by all means, either contact the local piece of sale, as I said before, or uh, give us a call on 101 and they'll put you in touch with one of us. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much.